Um, this next session is very exciting. Um, uh, we're going to talk about why artists matter. And uh, our good friend Charles Garino is here to have a conversation with Samantha Lees. Charles Garino is the publisher of Art Forum magazine. He's no stranger to Hong Kong. Um, and he's uh, something people don't know about Charles is that he used to be an artist. <laughs> and um, has been very active in, in, um, in writing about art for many, many years. So, and Samantha Lee is a journalist and an author based in Hong Kong. She is a regular critic also to Art Forum magazine. So, welcome. Is this working? Is this working? Then no one can hear you. <laughs> okay. So we're here to talk about why artists matter. So I think we should start with a simple question, which is, what is the role of the artist in a secular society? Um, I'll get to that. Like, okay. First, I don't know why you're all here. You should be at the gym. It's, it's Saturday morning. Thank you so much. And thank you, Sam. You're welcome. <laughs> um, why art matters, is that, was, is that the question? Sure, why do artists matter? Um, you know, uh, my, um, I'm gonna start by talking about my mom. Um, a diehard Democrat. I'm, um, I'm sorry she's not going to be here to see Hillary elected. Please. Um, and she always used to say, you're not going to change anybody's mind. You can only get the people who already agree with you to go and vote. So I'm going to assume that I don't really have to answer that question for anyone here. If I do, you're probably, you know, working here and are not really sure why you're working here. Um, to the people who um, have never been enthralled entering a cathedral or astonished walking through a museum or struck speechless by a piece of public art, um, I can't help you. If you don't know why art matters, um, tough. Good luck decorating your apartment. Um, what's, what's, do you have another question? Sure. <laughs> Well, that was actually going to be my follow-up question. What about the people who don't care? But um, So you said during an interesting conversation we were having last night that despite everybody probably in this room believing that art and artists matter, artists are often the last who are considered in the art world. So would you like to elaborate on that? Yeah, I, I wish that practically speaking, artists mattered more. Um, everyone likes to adopt the idea that, you know, art is at the core of what we do, and the artists are, 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 are those who drive us. Um, but I would say to that, um, a curator's career could last 40 years. Um, so too an administrator or a gallerist. But an artist's career, practically speaking, the real career they set out to have, can last 40 days and then be over. Or maybe two seasons and then be over. And then they have to settle for a retrospective you know, in their dotage uh, at their local art museum, and that's enough, and it's not enough. Um, if artists really do matter, then they should matter more. Okay. And as a publisher of the most influential art magazine, what would you say is the role of the media of strong coverage and criticism of artists' work in the cultural ecology, and secondly, what is your impression of art reporting in Hong Kong and China? Well, obviously, the art media is very important, or I wouldn't be here. Um, you know, that's a, that's a very complicated question in that it's really, uh, it plays a different role everywhere. Um, 
in China, up on the mainland, it's very uphill. Um, there's a lot of practices that um, are anathema to the way people practice art criticism elsewhere in the world, quid pro quo, play, pay to play. Um, and um, I've spent the last decade um, in our very little, tiny little office trying to promulgate ideas about journalism and uh, independent scholarship that in many instances are foreign um, to people there. Um, however, that being said, um, we have found real purchase there because um, the China that I went to go find was a nation of scholars and poets. It wasn't a nation of merchants and people dying to have more kids. It was a, a place where um, art was so much a fundamental part of the civilization and it was so cherished by the people that um, all, all I felt it really needed from our part was just a little awakening. Um, I think that's the same thing that many of the successful galleries who've gone to China went to find and found. Um, so um, I think the role is really one of, um, it's kind of stewardship. If you just, you know, um, I once said much to my dismay that 95% of all contemporary art cannot be taken seriously. And I was very worried about how people would react to that. Um, and some of my colleagues said, oh, don't worry, everybody thinks they're in the 5%. So I would say that the role of art critics is to discern where the 5% lies and try and explicate that, um, to give it a historical context, to give it meaning through, um, through illustration, and also to place it within a larger framework of the other practices that are occurring. And what about Hong Kong? Would you say that it has a, a burden that's different to China in terms of media reporting on art? I actually think the media environment here is great. Um, and I think a lot of really good publications come out of Hong Kong. And I think intentions are very good here. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of good intentions, but good intentions don't build museums. Money does. Um, and that's what I would say about Hong Kong. Uh, I, if, there, if I have one fundamental criticism about Hong Kong, it's that the, 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 it's, it's not in the city's DNA to create a huge infrastructure for art. And I think people are really trying to change that now, and that's very edifying. And, and the whole world is watching. So keep doing it. Get that museum built, will you? Well, you said last night that Hong Kong is a city that was built on trade, and as you've just said now, it's not doesn't seem to be within the DNA to build these institutions and and to have that kind of groundswell of public support that exists in other cities. Um, and you said that it would be foolish to ignore the obvious when it comes to the art scene or the art marketplace here. Do you would you like to share further thoughts with the audience? <laughs> well, I don't I don't like to speculate too much about that which I don't know, and right. that, that's most things. But um, I would say that, you know, in the history of Hong Kong is really quite different than many other places. It's really a place where that was uh, kind of bipolar. You had the large expat population who was get in, get out, make the money and go. And then you had the local population. And I think there was a big disconnect here over, over the course of, you know, 100 years where the, the sense of civic pride was left to, um, was, was just left to lie fallow. Um, and people are trying to change that now. Um, I think as it, as it begins to change, there's this other schism, which is now, we, now we're going to become part of a greater China. Um, and what does that mean? Um, and I really think you, it's, honestly, it's a very gray area right now. I would, I, would really, I would really hesitate to speculate on anything that's likely to happen in the next 20 years. Okay, fair enough. Um, and I think a, a, another lovely thing that you said during our conversation last night, and we're talking about the artists here, we're talking about the people who make art, but you said that art is important to all sentient beings. And you had a lovely story about a bowerbird. <laughs> well, uh, you know, I, I guess if you, you guys should have been at dinner last night, it yeah, would have basically. been, a, we, would have, you know, we had our conversation. Um, I just, um, you know, when I look, you know, really, I, I think some of the questions I've been asked here over the last 10 or 12 years 
have, have been wonderfully simple and slightly ridiculous. Uh, of course art matters. How can it not matter? Um, and, and it's not just to us. You know, I believe in the exceptionalism of human beings, but I also believe that, you know, dolphins and, and chimps and birds are sentient beings too. And anyone who tells me that a bowerbird who decorates its nest with all the bits of blue plastic it can find over the course of many months isn't making an artistic statement, well, I just don't think they're giving that bird enough credit. I think it's fundamentally a part of who we are, and any assumption that um, it's special or has to be sold is just ridiculous. It's, 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 it's in us. It is us. Um, on that note, would you, would you like to open it up to the floor? Would you like to say anything else at the moment? I don't know. Thanks for having me. But <laughs> <laughs> any question? I'm happy to answer any questions. I just, you know, what, what up, Meg? Do you want to repeat that? Uh, sure. Um, hello. Hi. Um, maybe you'd like to talk a little bit about the history and the current situation of artform.com.cn and sort of the trials and tribulations of operating in Beijing, setting up a Chinese language site and why you decided to do that. I mean, I think you're one of the few that's been successful over the long term in operating a Chinese language art site. And uh, I think it would be interesting for people to know a little bit more about that. Well, I would start by saying success is a very relative term. Um, you know, I don't know. I came to China, must have been about 15 years ago or so, and um, it just seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> um, I felt that I, 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 did not, I did not want to do some kind of weirdly imperialist idea that I'm going to bring art form to China. That wasn't my intention at all. When I got here, when, there, here, I guess it's here now, when I got here, I really um, felt like there was a need. There was there, people, there were a lot of incredible artists and incredible scholars, um, writers, people who were truly hungry for something that they could be passionate about and didn't have to, um, and didn't have to, you know, pay to play. Um, and I just felt that there was um, an opportunity to do something. And my mantra has always been, in China, by China, for China. And it's taken me a good 10 years to get all of the white people off the staff. And now, we're Chinese. Um, and what do we cover? We, 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 we live with the premise that China is fundamentally a part of the art world. I must have said a hundred times in art schools all over China to the students who assembled, who were there thinking like, yes, I'm gonna make a lot of money as an artist, telling them, no, you're not, actually. Um, being an artist is an affliction more than a vocation. But if you're incapable of doing other work, then be an artist. Be a citizen of the world. Do not be a Chinese artist, bad idea. Then you'll just become a fashion You'll be put aside when that fashion is over and a new fashion comes. Look at everything, look at everyone, and, and, and act independently. That being said, China's a very particular place. Like most places, it's bound by its language, uh, and it's bound by its people. And so what we've tried to do is to um, set up a platform where the journalistic principles that we employ in New York are employed in China. In other words, we're correspondent driven. We ask that our correspondents go out, find the work that appeals to them, that they are passionate about, and that they feel um, is truly contributing to the canon. If we find out that you're being paid to do it, that it's your brother-in-law, or that there's some other thing that makes it suspect, you're not gonna be writing for us anymore. This is not to say that we employ standards that are better than anyone else's. These are just the standards we employ. And everyone else is, is entirely welcome to join us there. But what we do is we try to give uh, criticism and scholarship an independent voice and a platform that is unassailable. 
in New York, it took us probably about 50 years for that to pay off. But I tell you, if a, if a gallerist, for example, feels that they can buy their review, the estimation they have of you and your enterprise is truly diminished. But if they feel they absolutely cannot, and then they get a review or an artist gets covered, that has, that has real value. And it takes a while. It will take us 20 years of doing what we do in China, if the central government please lets us, to, um, to become what I would consider a success, which means that the people who support what we're doing support it for the right reasons and not because they can buy it. Is that too no, that's, that's self-important? I hate to be that. <laughs> that's great. Uh, following up on that, this issue I think we see a lot here is the blurring of the lines between the publisher's role and the editor's role. And how do you sort of maintain a balance between independent editorial uh, journalism and publishers' sort of uh, involvement? Well, as a publisher, I sit on the fence. So I have a very delicate role to play in between advertising and editorial. Yes, if there are any art dealers in the room, please advertise. And if there are any artists or critics in the room, just ignore what I said. <laughs> I think it's very important, you know, that you, you have to acknowledge the realities of it. And um, I was at a dinner party in Milan, and uh, there was a guy there who had this really great gallery in, you know, in the East End in London, and very independent, really smart. And I, and I was like, man, dude, I really would love for you to advertise. And he said, what, so then I'll get a review? And luckily, somebody who's been writing for Art Forum for 40 years was sitting next to me. And I said, and I've only been at Art Forum a scant 34 years. I said, Giorgio, in 34 years, have I ever asked you to review anything? And he said, no. Now, that doesn't mean that a lot of the dealers in that room hadn't gotten their reviews, but they got their reviews because there was something of merit in what they were showing, not because I asked. So I would not, have I ever asked you to review anything? So, you know, that's the, the role I play is, is being frank and honest about how the dynamics work. Yes, art forms income comes 90% of it from the display ads that are in the magazine. But every single, uh, every single gallery or museum that's in that magazine knows one thing, that the editorial well is separate. And that's why they're in the advertising part. Hello, uh, Charles. I'm you know, you guys were the same two asking questions before. Are you <laughs> ringers? No, oh, just kidding. <laughs> No, I just uh, want to ask you a question just after you have spoken to me. Um, I just would like to bring the conversation back to Hong Kong. I represent the Hong Kong Art Gallery Association and a homegrown Hong Kong person with a gallery in Hong Kong with a passion to develop their art in Hong Kong. As we all know, we are part of China for sure, but we have a very, very different culture compared to um, mainland China. And in Hong Kong, we have over 2,000 art shows every year happening here. And although um, our, but at the same time, the art criticism world and the art theoretical framework is weak, period. Um, how, I remember you were saying how you, um, eliminated like uh, white Western people to, to in China to critique them. Um, so I would like to ask a few questions. First, um, what is the strategy of artforum.cn in criticizing art in Hong Kong? Are you using Chinese journalists to criticize us? And if not, and if so, what is the percentage of, of, of your people are reviewing all the 2000 shows in Hong Kong? And how can we expect your support? Thank you. Um. Well, I think everybody who lives in Hong Kong knows that I just love this place. And I would say that you guys get the best of both worlds from us. Because you get coverage from the CN site, and you get coverage from Art Forum, the English language platforms. So you really do get both. Um, we don't have a strategy. You know, I've never, I've never had a strategy. I don't, I don't, I, don't I, I have delusions more than strategies. Um, so I would say that um, we're just, you know, if you're looking for a strategy, you'd have to just look at the people who write for Art Forum here in Hong Kong, and there are a lot, um, and ask them what motivates them. I think what you would probably find if you ask 10 people 10 different ideas about what motivates them. 
I think finally at the end of the day, and this might sound a little bit idealistic, but it's really the art. They're looking at the art. Um, when, it comes to, when it comes to the infrastructure here in Hong Kong, that's something else. That's a different thing. You know, if you look at the infrastructure in Berlin or New York or London, it's built into the DNA of those places. Um, and I would say that, uh, and I just said this recently in, in another forum, um, all great museums started with private collections. It, that, it's just, everyone said, well, what about China? You know, there's all these egomaniacal collectors starting museums. I'm thinking, great. That means that in 20, 30, 40 years, the infrastructure there will be incredibly healthy. In New York, the Metropolitan Museum, the Whitney Museum, the Guggenheim Museum, these were all private collect these were the same thing during the american industrial revolution some rich dude who had a great art collection who wanted to drag the french impressionists into new york and make a big statement they bought them they housed them and those places became part of what the city was so now when you when you look at the charitable infrastructure of new york when it comes to artistic contributions all of those museums are supported by the people so i would say that what hong kong has lacked from what i can see is that the private infusion of money with a devotion to one real estate like that's really important and then the collections that go into it um, and that takes time you know i once said to someone here you can't become an international uh, art center because you stamp your feet and insist on it you have to put your money there you have to put years there you have to put tradition there and that takes time and, and to get back to that first question, why artists matter? Artists matter because in a place like Hong Kong, where real estate is everything, artists always go to the lousy neighborhoods, go there first, <laughs> set it up so that everyone else can move in later. So artists matter <laughs> in the most fundamental way right here in Hong Kong. Was there, there was a second part. Did I answer both parts? Did I answer any part? How, what about your take on art criticism and framework in Hong Kong? Um, like I say, I think it's good. You know, I think the I think the magazines you have here are good. I think that um, certainly Art Forum is here, but you know, Art Forum has a limited role to play. You know, we we I'm personally I'm when I'm here I'm here, but when I'm in 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 Berlin I'm in Berlin, and you know what I'm doing there is m much the same as what I'm doing here. Um, Art Forum is the we're the world um, and what we're doing is telling everyone in Hong Kong you're part of the world and I take that seriously and I don't expect people to um, you know have all the municipal and civic pride you want but I'm going to treat you as citizens of the world because honestly the artists who work here have earned that hello hi Art and politics. So you started with your democratic mom, and I want to have your view on two sides. One is the Chinese censorship and how can we break through that uh, and to be objective journalism and artistic uh, vision in the region. And the other side is the American politics and its influence on art. Just a few weeks ago, Gagosian set a charity event to support Hillary. Does it make sense? Is it... Uh, you know, does it, is it going to influence the artists that Gagosian carry uh, or in general? You know, I think it's very interesting uh, to raise this question. Well, I just produced a videotape, which you can see on artforum.com. I beg you all to go there and watch it. I asked, um, I'm going to try and remember them in sequence, Carrie Mae Weems, um, Matthew Weinstein, Marilyn Minter, Hans Hacke, um, Nadja Ayeri, and Vitali Komar to speak on the subject of art and politics. And they were all asked a very kind of Proustian questionnaire. Do you think an artist has an obligation to participate in the civic society? Um, do you think that art has uh, any effect on politics or is that just um, delusional on the part of the artists? Um, what role do you think they can and should play? Um, and how would you talk about art and politics relative to the really insane environment that's in America at the moment? Um, so 
what I think is what they thought, which is just everything. It is all over the map. Um, as regards censorship, that's a tough one. Um, I'm going to assume that my minder is in the room. <laughs> you know, I, um, and I love China. I really do. I, I'm devoted so much of, you know, energy and time and money and ideals and passion um, to, to be there. Um, and I have to remind the staff, who's always ready to head to the stanchions and go into the streets, like, hey, we're an art magazine. If you want to continue existing here, you have to pay attention to what you're being paid to pay attention to. And the longer you can exist here, the, lo the, the greater effect that you'll have. It's a bit like the slow, the slow burn. You know, I just don't think, certainly following Tiananmen, that, you know, getting into the streets does anything. You know, I, you know when it comes to self-censorship, I'm not afraid to admit to it. We engage in it constantly. Because we have a, we have a, we have a, at this point, we have an obligation to the artists who are working there. We have an obligation to the gallerists who are doing business there. We have an obligation to the museums that are trying to get a foothold there. So um, I try to stay away from politics when I'm in China. And back in the States, I've given Hillary a lot of my money. <laughs> and you know, the, the November issue of Art Forum, uh, the magazine, is, uh, has a big section on art and politics. And I have to say, in the magazine, it's very obscured. It's very metaphorical. It's really allegorical. It's very not in your face at all. Um, and even when the artists were asked, this is before the election, so you can see it all. On November the 1st, it'll go live on our site. Um, they had some really interesting things to say, but very few had something to say that, you know, like what we really want to say about Donald Trump. I hope there's no one here who supports Donald Trump. If, and if there is, get out. <laughs> Are there any other questions? Hi. Um, thanks for your insights. I really enjoyed it. Um, so following the art and politics question, I'd like to ask about art and marketing. And how do you see the role of the artists, the gallery, and the media regarding the marketing of artists. And as a follow-on to that, who would you say is the most underrated these days and the most overrated, if you don't mind? Thanks. The, the last part I won't answer. <laughs> <laughs> so no you can forget that. Um, you know, contemporary art is, 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 a, is, a, is a strange, it's very strange. Um, because the criteria by which things are judged is, is definitely, you know, it's a moving target. Um, I would say that marketing is, is very important, and I, but I use the word marketing in the broadest possible sense. Um, every year, one of our writers, um, Michelle Grabner, brings her graduate class to Art Forum, and they all like walk around the magazine to see, you know, the legend, the mystery, the magic. It's just an office with a bunch of nerds. Um, and they come into my office, and I tell them all the same thing. I, I ask them, how many of you can write about art? And if all the hands don't go up, I tell the ones who haven't raised their hand, you better learn. Because in a world where art is ideation, in a world that has been characterized by very particular artists and in very particular ways, you know, from Duchamp to the art de povera to the pop artists, if you can't if you're not going to be judged by your technical facility, you better be judged by the character and quality of your ideas. And you cannot be judged by the character and quality of your ideas unless you can speak about them. So if that's marketing, sure, everybody's got to do it. You know, you know, you live in New York, you meet a lot of movie stars. They all go out on the road and like do those goofy interviews after their movie comes out and talk about the movie because they have to. It's no different for artists. You know, if you're kind of a recalcitrant artist who's really antisocial and, you know what I mean, you, sp you know, like someone said that in between, between two engineers, an introvert looks at his own feet and an extrovert looks at your feet when he talks. Well, artists have to look you in the eye and they have to open their mouths and they have to talk. And they have to help the gallerists do their job. Because at the end of the day, if an artist can't sell his work, 
he's not going to be an artist for very long, or he's going to be a very poor and unhappy artist, and after a lifetime will be a kind of sort of bitter and slightly, you know, weird artist. Hey, I would like to ask uh, art and disability, social inclusion, uh, and social equality, particularly uh, in, our li in our living environment, 80% of uh, the information are delivered through uh, visual form, art form, but they are not all uh, accessible, particularly for people with visually impaired or elderly with low vision. So uh, what's your viewpoint? Thank you. Well, I think you have to, art is where you find it. Um, a lot of the artists who did this interview that you'll see online on November the 1st, when you go to artforum.com, they speak about music, they speak about literature. Um, they, they extend the definition of art across all media. So, um, you know, a visual artist in a way, has no fundamental obligation to sort of cater to the blind. How could he? Um, it, it's, uh, but, but I would say that if, if it is true what I say, and trust me, it is true, art is such a fundamental part of who we are and how we operate that it is everywhere. It is all around us. Um, and whether it is, you know, the sound quality in a room that was very carefully conceived by an architect, or if it's a wonderful piece of music, or if it's a color field painting, you know, it's all appealing to the sense of um, our own fascination with ourselves. So, you know, our art is where you find it. Do you want to touch art when you go into a museum? <laughs> well, you're not allowed. No. <laughs> well, a lot of art is fragile. Hey, man, I'm a publisher. You can touch my magazine anytime you want. <laughs> um, I don't know. Tough luck on that one. Good luck. Um, just don't let them catch you. Don't go in that Kagosian gallery, in the pet because really those there's, they got more guards than art in there. I think we have time for one or two more, right? What time is it? I don't know. I'm not keeping the time. I. <laughs> We're okay. Good. Um, so a second question uh, on and when you, in your introduction you talked about uh, that you can do anything for people who haven't been awed by a cathedral a painting. I'd like to ask you, what have you been awed by recently that's not a traditional form of art? So something that maybe includes electronics or anything, an ex a different experience than what people generally think of when they think of art that awed you, if you have such experience. You mean like the Grand Canyon or something like that? Um, or something man-made? Not man -made. nature either. Like more like you know, man-made kind of You're thing. trying to get me to name names. and you know. uh, any, Anything you want. Um, I mean, this sort of sounds like a little hokey, but I sort of, I live my life in awe. I really do. Um, I, um, I was awed by the, by our dinner guests last night. I just thought that, that, you know, they were, they, they, they had a kind of an intelligence and a willingness and an openness that was really edifying. Um, I'm awed by you guys. Like I, I, the first thing I said is, what are you doing here? Um, I, you know, I, I, you're, you're looking at an enthusiast. I am enthusiastic, and um, and I'm, I'm, I'm finally, I'm a New Yorker. And one of the things I love about New York is it doesn't hold success against anyone. Um, it appreciates everything. We, we have uh, what's built into our DNA is a fundamental appreciation of anybody who can make it in town, and that includes all religions, all races all creeds, and any kind of success. If you could pay for your dry cleaning bill and your rent, wow, I'm in awe.
last one? No? Any closing remarks, Charles? Well, um, art matters. It really does. Um, and I would say to, I say this a lot in Hong Kong. Does that work? If that's working. Um, you know, I, you, if, you, if, if, if you can collect art, just do it. Just go to a gallery and buy some art. Um, I, 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 I think, and, and I think Meg knows this, I think anybody who sells art here knows this, I think of art dealers as truly the unsung heroes of the art world. They are the only denizens of this world who put their money where their eyes are, where their heart is, where their passion is. I asked uh, Uli Sig at dinner the other night, I said, tell me Uli, how many times have you purchased art that actually put you in personal financial jeopardy? And he said, without even thinking, never. Well, that's not true if you're an art dealer. They do it every, every month. They put everything on the line for art. And if you want great museums, then you have to have great galleries. And if you want artists to love your town and be in your town, you have to have great galleries. And the only way to have great galleries is to support them. So I encourage you to do that. Um, and, I, and, for the, and for the gallerists, I encourage you all to advertise in Art Forum. <laughs> <laughs>